Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message today is in the the, uh, Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. Hear this key verse. And Jesus said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? It is like a grain of mustard seed. This is our text. In a lesson today, Jesus talks about something that is so small that even, even if you wanted to see it, you couldn't. At least not from this distance from the pulpit to the, to the pew. I mean, I could hold it out here on the tip of my finger and give you a good long time to look at it, and you'd still never be able to see it. It's just too tiny. The seed Jesus is talking about, of course, is the mustard seed. And the reason why I bring it up today is because Jesus has some interesting things to say about it. He says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Well, that doesn't seem to make any sense. A mustard seed? An insignificant, unimpressive and quite obviously incapable of doing anything great, is like the kingdom of God? What could a mustard seed possibly have to do with the kingdom of God? Well, that's what Jesus is teaching us in our lesson today. He says the kingdom of God, like a mustard seed, merely appears to be insignificant, unimpressive, and incapable of doing anything great. Before we go any further, we need to understand uh, what Jesus is speaking about here when he refers to the kingdom of God. He's making reference to himself and his saving work. Uh, Scripture tells us how Jesus often sat with people and taught them and then healed them, but then he proclaimed, the kingdom of God is in your midst, or the, and the kingdom of God is near you. See, just like that puny little seed, uh, that little mustard seed, can't be seen from more than five feet away, so Jesus merely appears insignificant, unimpressive, and uh, incapable of doing anything that was great. At first glance, the kingdom doesn't seem to be much of a kingdom of all, at all. I mean, Jesus didn't have any armies. Instead, all he had was 12 ordinary men following him around, and some of them uh, smelled an awful lot like fish. Together, they are also this kingdom of God. Apparently, did include Nazareth, since the Jesus' hometown had driven him out of town. This kingdom of God included the least desirable people: sinners, prostitutes, tax collectors. You might as well go ahead and invite everybody in, and he did. Some kingdom this is: insignificant, unimpressive and by all appearances, incapable of doing anything great. Well, it even really looks unimpressive when you see its king being hauled away, hung up, and dragged down. Jesus appears to be no match for a few lightly armed temple guards, not to mention the Roman soldiers. Jesus appears fully speechless under pressure, Um, not being able to give an answer to his enemies, having no final great eloquent speech to his followers, hanging on the cross, he appears about as helpless as a rebel slave. And then when he dies, well, nothing surely is going to come of that. But Jesus knew all that, and that's exactly his point in speaking about the mustard seed. He said, with what shall we compare the kingdom of God? And with what parable should we use for it? The kingdom of God is like a grain of a mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. And yet, when it is sown, it grows and and becomes the largest largest plant of all the garden plants that puts out such large branches that the birds can nest in its shade. Though a puny seed, from it grows the largest plant in the garden. From something that seems so insignificant, unimpressive, and seemingly incapable of doing anything great, comes a plant that is so wonderful that living creatures can find shelter and refuge in it. When it comes to the kingdom of God, Christians would do well to remember and learn from the mustard seed. For things have not changed to this very day. You see, the kingdom of God is among us. 
The kingdom of God is right here. Jesus is as active today as he was when he healed the paralytic and forgave his sins. He's as active today as when he gave blind Bartimaeus his sight. He's as active today when he fed the 5,000. The world wants Jesus to operate in some dramatic way, and he does, just not the way they expect. Jesus comes to us via the tools he's given us, the means of grace we call them, his word and sacraments, to forgive, to renew, and to give eternal life. The kingdom of, of God is here, reigning in grace and true, truth through the ministry of his church. And yet, to the naked eye, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of grace, doesn't seem like much. Bread is just bread. Water is just water. Wine is just wine. The words of absolution just seem to be a bunch of words. And the only things that sermons seem to heal are bad cases of insomnia. You know, the newspapers and the, the media, the evening news, if you look at that, you will find that there's probably nothing that happens here that's deemed worthy to print. But perhaps what's even worse is when Christians view the kingdom of God as insignificant, unimpressive, and incapable of doing anything great. You've heard the list of concerns. So the people aren't coming. We can't make our weekly budget. Where's all the young people and the kids? And if they do come, they say, well, my child's behavior hasn't gotten any better, better even though I brought him to church. It's at times like, this, times like this that Christians can lose faith and be tempted to want to dress up the good news to make it more appealing or to water down God's word to make it more pal palatable, like, like eliminating confession and absolution or to make it less offensive so they tone down Jesus' suffering death on the cross. And it's when this happens that Christian can, Christians can lose heart, believing that the kingdom that is present in this house is as insignificant as a mustard seed. It's really not that important at all. When that's all we see, we're in trouble. But there's so much more if we take to heart and mind the truth of our Lord's words. Jesus said that Jesus is merely appears insignificant, unimpressive, and incapable of doing great things. Jesus said that while the mustard seed is the smallest of the plants, it can, when it's planted, grow to be uh, the largest plants in the garden. Some of those seeds can grow to be as large as 10 feet or more, with such big branches that even the birds of the air can nest in it. Now, even though our minds, our wisdom and reason and logic, when they're left to themselves, they have a hard time believing that. And yet, the eyes of faith behold it. By faith, we see how things are. We see that every Sunday morning and Wednesday evening, the seeds of the gospel are sown. Every wedding and funeral that, we, that is conducted in this house those same seeds are scattered. And people hear, some by faith repent. And at that moment, there is rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven. The thr a thrill goes through heaven because of something that's happened back down here. Here, the almighty and merciful God speaks to us in his word. Here, we speak to him in prayer. And in the name of, our, in the name of his son, who has made peace with God for us by his bloodshed on the cross, he listens. We praise the strong name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in song. Together, we stand as one body in Christ, boldly confessing our faith with one voice, stating who God is and what he has done by the words of the creeds. And sins are forgiven. My sins and your sins, paid for by Jesus' death on the cross. Forgiveness that is announced at absolution and received in our Lord's Supper, our, his body and blood. Guilt is replaced with peace. 
Death is replaced with life. As Martin Luther said so simply in the Catechism, he says, where there is forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. Through the gifts, through the work of the Holy Spirit, he strengthens our faith and love towards God, and he moves us to love our neighbor. This is the mustard seed growing. That's the, that's the by the work of the Holy Spirit, what is being done here in his house. To miss the kingdom of God, the ministry that is presented here, would be like looking into a manger and only seeing an unfortunate child. To bypass God's word and sacraments would be like looking at the cross and simply seeing just the execution of another religious crazy man. In this life and in this world, the kingdom of God will appear like a mustard seed, insignificant, irrelevant, and incapable of anything great. But of course we know that wasn't just another baby in the manger. And that wasn't just a, another religious crazy man on the cross. We know and rejoice in the fact that the good news of Jesus Christ has been revealed to us in common, ordinary, earthly means. Power that has forgiven our sins, called us to faith, and given us eternal life. And one day, when our Lord returns, we in the whole world, believers and unbelievers alike, will see just how great the kingdom of a mustard seed can be. Like those birds that Jesus talked about in this lesson, who sought shelter in the shade of the mustard seed, we live by faith in the shelter of the kingdom of grace, where Christ's righteousness clothes us or covers all of our sins. He washes them all away. And then one day, we'll get to spend eternity with him. But until that day, we, ha we who have knowledge of this mustard seed also live lives that have hidden significance. For example, no one may notice the parent who takes a few minutes out of the day to spend time with her child at bedtime to read them a Bible story or a to say a prayer seems insignificant, such a small amount of time. And yet remember the mustard seed and the amazing things that can happen and rejoice in what you can do in the name of Christ. And likewise, a simple invitation to church to hear God's word, to hear that precious seed that is sown seems like a simple thing. But it can cause great things. It can cause rejoicing in heaven. Let each of us look for those opportunities to share that faith and live by grace. And then let us pray that God would make these seemingly insignificant little things to grow among us all. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding fill your hearts and minds with love for your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may that seed of faith that he has planted in you continue to grow and grow and produce a bountiful harvest, not only for yourself, but for your family and all those you meet. Amen.